Hey, it's Miriam with Engadget, and this is a quick look at the uh, Samsung Wave, which is a uh, feature phone, a, a relatively high-end feature phone from Samsung that came out about six months ago. Um, it's kind of like the uh, spiritual uh, parent of the Galaxy S, essentially, spec-wise. So um, let me give you a quick tour of the outside, uh, starting with um, the left side here got the volume rocker here followed by a little piece of plastic end cap here this is uh, actually aluminum on the side in the back and you've got a microphone here nothing until you hit the right side where you find a dedicated camera button right there on um, double the tent uh, again aluminum uh, and here is the lock key which is not used for power on uh, this phone just to lock the screen and then here at the top you have a little door that hides the uh, micro USB charge and data port, port and then a uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as a little speaker. The speaker looks small but it's actually pretty loud um, and this brings us back to the left side. Uh, in front here you have the Samsung logo and the earpiece and then um, a front facing camera, it's VGA right there. And at the bottom, you have three keys, a very similar layout to Symbian on touch screen phones. Uh, talk, end, and uh, kind of a home button or menu button. Uh, this also is used to go back. And then uh, here on the back, you have the battery uh, latch to open the battery door. And the uh, 5 megapixel autofocus camera. This is uh, capable of doing HD video recording at 720p. It's a pretty nice uh, camera for feature phone. As you can see, the, the back is aluminum and the, the tolerances on these seams are really, really tight. So this is a really, really well-made uh, phone. feels really premium. has a glass front. Um, you can't really see it very well in the video here, but they're actually like a rounded edge. It uh, kind of slides up towards the edge here, um, the glass. So it's not completely flat. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video. Same at the bottom here. That's pretty special. Uh, they certainly um, push the materials here quite a bit with the manufacturing. And it just feels that way. It's uh, not very heavy, but um, pretty dense, pretty uh, strong and solid feeling phone. Um, so here's what the screen looks like. It's a 3.3 inch Super AMOLED display with um, 800 by 480 resolution. And behind the battery door here, you have it's a pretty large battery. Take it out. I'll show you the uh, capacity on the battery. It's 1500 milliamps, which is quite nice. And here you have a, a micro SD card slot. I put a 2 gig card in there. There was uh, no card provided with the device. And here's the SIM card. I've got a T-Mobile SIM in there right now. Um, and uh, there's about 500 megs or so of usable storage on the device itself. And you can see here, once I put the battery back in, the battery door is beautifully machined or cast, I'm not sure, aluminum. It's a really well, really well put together device. Now, spec-wise, I mentioned some of them already with the screen. Um, it does have quite a, an array of specs. It has uh, Wi-Fi N and Bluetooth 3, which is quite unusual on, on a feature phone, um, even rare on current smartphones. And it has a uh, 1 gigahertz A8 processor inside, which is pretty snappy running BADA. Um, the other thing is this has 3G, but unfortunately it's not compatible with 3G in the US. Um, it only features, um, I believe, 920, 100 3G for the rest of the world, and quad band edge for uh, those of us using it in the US or in North America. Um, so that's you know basically the gist of it. Let me give you a size comparison with a couple of other devices. First, the uh, the Galaxy S. This is the Samsung Vibrant on T-Mobile, and I want to give you a comparison with this one because they're using the same screen. Of course, this is turned off now, so I'm going to wait for it to boot. But um, the Galaxy S is really hardware-wise is the successor of of this um, of this Bada phone, this Wave. 
And uh, you can tell because the only major differences, other than the screen size, are the processors. Basically, this got the 1 gigahertz A8, and this has a 1 gigahertz Hummingbird. And also, the camera um, modules are actually identical. The only difference is that the vibrant, uh, this particular Galaxy S does not have a flash. There are some versions of the Galaxy S with a flash. And of course, there is no dedicated camera key on the uh, Galaxy S on this model. Uh, there are some models with a camera key. So here is a comparison of the screens. As you can see, this is 3.3 inch and this is 4 inches and both are 480 by 800 pixels. So um, that's a comparison with the kind of old, newer, younger brother. And then of course the inevitable comparison with the iPhone which, um, you know, is kind of a standard thing these days. Uh, so here's the iPhone in size. Let me lock the screen so that we can get a better feel for the physical size of the phones. And um, the thickness, it's a pretty thin phone, just like the, the Vibrant, the Galaxy S. Here's the back. So it gives you an idea you're looking at a phone about the same footprint as the iPhone. And of course, the iPhone has a 3.5 inch screen. So slightly bigger, but not much. So there it is, a quick look at the Samsung Wave, a Bada phone, a feature phone that's really quite high end and really shows what uh, Samsung can do when uh, uh, they uh, basically pull out all of their uh, chops. All right, cheers.